I'm Sarah and I want you to code like a child. And this doesn't mean that this, this presentation is only for you if you're a programmer and you're writing code. This is just kind of a catchy title. Um, and I think some examples are drawn from my professional experience as a software developer. But I think a lot of the things that I want to um, show you can apply to everyone and are pretty general. The only requirement that there is for you to take away anything from this talk at, is that you want to level up. You want to become better at your job. You want to become good enough for your next job to get a promotion, learn a new technology, learn new tools, new skills. If you, on the other hand, think, nah, I'm fine. I don't need to improve anything. Then, okay, maybe this talk is not for you. Um, feel free to already go to the lunch break or check out track two. Okay, now that this is out of the way, we all want to learn and we all want to become better. And we want to do so throughout our whole life because being able to learn new skills helps us to handle change. There are always new technologies, there are new ways of working, changing environments. And I think the last year has shown this quite drastically, how quickly things can change and how important it is to be able to adapt to this changing environment. And as someone working in the tech industry, I think we're certainly very aware that there are new things to learn every day. I mean, new day, new JavaScript framework, right? But the question is, how can we do this? How can we learn outside of a formal context like a school or university? And I think one great way to do this is to find your own teachers, find role models, find experts who have the knowledge or the skills that you seek. And if you're lucky, they are already sharing their knowledge. They are writing blog posts, they are creating video tutorials, or they're participating in uh, community events just like this one. So I think that you are here attending this conference um, is already a great start. There is just one problem. Sometimes learning from these really smart people that we admire a lot can feel demotivating because it might feel that we can never reach their level. We might feel a little inadequate because they just seem so far um, ahead of us and we might feel some kind of imposter syndrome and maybe who just should give up right now. And I thought about this and I came up with a solution and that is um, to look for other role models and I found children. Think about it for a second. There is, There are a lot of children, right? So you have a lot of chances to see them in action, to learn from what they do and to copy their behaviors. And the good thing is it's not demotivating because I'm sure that there's something where you are better than the average child. You may, on the other hand, ask yourself, okay, but what can I learn from the average child? What are they good at? Um, and I'm not talking about turning your office into a playground. I mean, some companies do this and it's certainly nice, um, helps maybe to keep employees happy, to inspire creativity. But what I want to show you here is something that you can do on your own. It doesn't depend on what your company does to support you. Um, I want you to look at certain behaviors and ways of thinking that we can, um, yeah, we can see in children and see if you can learn something from them and maybe copy some of these behaviors. And before I go into the behaviors, um, a little disclaimer. I don't think you should adopt all kinds of childish behaviors. Um, I certainly don't want you to throw a tantrum when your cookie request is denied. So there are certainly behaviors you can copy, but there are also some where you should stop and pick different role models. Okay, now that the legal side is uh, out of the way, let's get started. I will show you some good skills that you can copy from children. And the first thing you can learn from children is how to be annoying. 
You probably all have seen this way the children, maybe around the age four or five, when they try to learn the, uh, learn the world and understand what's going on around them. And they do this by asking questions and they don't stop. But why? But why? And they are digging and deeper and deeper until the parent or teacher is running out of patience and answers. And I would encourage you to do the same thing if you're in your next discussion uh, or meeting about requirements for a new project or feature. Don't just accept the easy answer that you're given at first. And don't think you understood everything. Make sure you understood everything. And make sure everyone in the room understood everything. And it's the same thing. And the way to do this is to ask more questions. Um, and like the curious child, I would recommend that you just ask as much as you can. Maybe get a little more creative with the questions you're asking, but why is always a good starting point. Your goal here is to understand what the real need is, what's the problem that you want to solve, and then don't just go with the easy, obvious solution. There could be something much better, easier to implement, cheaper to build, easier to maintain in the long run. And also make sure that everyone who's involved has the same understanding. Um, and actually, I have to admit, I didn't learn this from a child. I learned this um, from a former colleague of mine who um, has children, by the way. So I think this is no coincidence. And he was great at this. Um, and I was in a meeting with him once where we went from, this is the thing we want you to build. And then after like 500 questions from him, um, we went first to a real understanding what actually the problem was. And we went away with not just the one obvious solution, but we also had two other ideas that were totally different and that we could explore first. So yeah, be annoying. The next thing that you can learn from children is how to be unprofessional. A child doesn't have a job yet, it doesn't have a profession, it's just a child. So anytime it faces a challenge, it can approach this with an open mind. Um, a child can use any tool that she can get her hands on. Um, you, on the other hand, you have a job title. You are an expert in a certain technology and you may have the certificates to prove it. And I do not want to uh, discount this in any way. It's great what you have achieved. Your expertise is valuable. Knowledge is great. But it should only ever open more doors. It should give you more options. It should widen your perspective and it should not restrict the options that you are willing to consider. Don't let your expertise, your job title or your certificates define you. You are more than that. Because Sometimes it can happen that you're just so used to using your technologies, your favorite stack, that because this is the thing you're good at, right? But it may happen that you forget that not everything is a nail. And in the end, you're not paid to use your Java skills. You're paid to solve a technical problem, to build a technical solution. And sometimes the best way to solve this problem is not your preferred tech stack. Sometimes it might even be no tech at all. And my favorite example for this um, is if you consider database migration. Imagine you have a really large data store and you want to change your cloud provider. So you move from one data center to the other. And maybe the two data centers are across Germany. And actually the solution to this is just a, a random person with a driver's license. license. So one of about uh, 56 million uh, <laughs> uh, people in Germany alone. Because the bandwidth that you can achieve with a data storage device in a car is just so much higher than anything that you can achieve by transferring data over the wire. So here, low tech is the clear winner. Um, and all your expertise in, I don't know, SQL and networking will not be to just a random person who can drive a car. 
One other thing you can learn is how to think small. And I want to illustrate this with a story. Um, look at this image. So this is a street that I needed to cross as a child to get to my primary school. And the first time I had to do this on my own, it was really scary. It was a huge challenge. Um, but when I came back about two years ago, this road was just extremely harmless. I was even questioning why there was a traffic light at all, because there was literally no traffic. Um, but this, what does it show? It shows that at this point in my life, I have outgrown this type of problem. I might not struggle with driving to the city center of Berlin in rush hour. But it shows that your problems grow with you. You solve the problems at your size and then you grow. And the same applies to technical solutions. Solutions that work for you have to work for you, your team's experience level, your company size. And if you want to compare yourself to others and learn from others on how they approach things, you should look around in your neighborhood. Look at other companies that are your size or a little bit um, bigger. And because you're not Google, the solutions that Google uses are probably way too big for you. Um, when I was scared of that road as a uh, six year old, um, I followed the example of some grown ups, the second graders, because it's fine to look ahead but just a little. Um, do not so try to solve problems for scaling, for organizational um, problems that you might never have. And if you ever have them, then it's the time to solve them because then you will also have grown with your problems and are able to tackle them. I would also encourage you to be unproductive. Waste some time, build something completely useless. No one asks for it, just take some time and build um, a toy version of a real problem, something simplified. Because this allows you to train your skills on a small scale. And the smaller size makes it easier to understand all the concepts and to keep um, the whole picture um, in your mental image. Because um, like in child's play, there are also no real consequences. You can freely explore all the options. You don't need to fear that you break production, that you're running over budget or anything. And I think we as developers are already quite good at this when we learn new skills. Most tutorials that you will encounter will tell you to build a small sample application, the famous to-do app, to explore this technology. But I think we should do this more often because it can also help to take a step back and use this approach on something that you think you already know quite well. Um, and again, I have a small story to illustrate this because uh, recently, I had two junior developers on my team and they were already doing really great work. They were contributing to our huge code base um, and that code base had grown over several years and was quite complex. And then for a hack day project, um, we, we built a small single page application with React starting really from scratch. Um, and it was just a tiny thing that allowed you to pick the right place for lunch. But afterwards, one of them came to me and said how much this had helped her to get a better understanding of the core concepts of React. Because now she was able to really differentiate what are like the general concepts and best practices and what are kind of the specifics uh, of our code base um, that might be less relevant in different contexts. Something else we can learn is to be inconsistent. Children are great at changing their mind. They learn something new every day. They see something for the first time and with each new piece of information, um, they may change their plans for the future and their worldview. You might have seen this. Um, today, she's impressed by the fire truck and of course she wants to become a firefighter in the future. But maybe tomorrow, um, She's playing with Legos and then she decides that architect is the career path for her. And I would recommend you to sometimes be a little bit like this hypothetical child. When you receive new information, allow yourself to also change your mind. 
even if you just have a new thought, a new idea, change your mind. Don't feel this need to stick to your guns, to be true to your word and what you said yesterday. Sometimes just admit, hmm, maybe I've been wrong. I have a better idea now. Because this is super important to allow us to move forward faster, not only as a society, but also when you're looking for a technical solution, you need to have some flexibility. And to make this really work, you must allow the other people that you're working with to change their mind too. Everyone should feel safe to say, I was wrong, I changed my mind. You should praise them for it. It's a sign of strength and not a weakness. The final and most important advice is to be imperfect. Children are great at this. They have, still, they have to learn so much. They haven't had the time to perfect their skills in anything. And it's quite obvious that they are not perfect yet. But they are learning and they're taking steps forward every day. Have you ever opened a file, looked at some code that you wrote a year ago, two years ago or longer? Did it look something like this picture? Um, might feel bad, but actually this is a really good sign. What you wrote back then might not be very good, but you can see this now. So this means that you have come such a long way. It means you can learn, you can grow and become better. Um, and I was not really good at understanding this myself. When I was younger, I always believed that most of what I can do and what I can be good at is defined by some inherent talents that I had. I'm good at math. I'm bad at painting. So what's the point in even trying? And only later, when I was already an adult, was I able to overcome this type of thinking. I, I had always hated most vegetables. That was just the way I was. Nothing to be done about it, right? Well, at some point I got into cooking and I wanted to try all the recipes and having a strict no veggies rule was a pretty big restriction. So I trained myself to eat them and I trained myself to eat them without feeling disgusted at all. So I started small and over time we changed. Today I love vegetables. And this experience was what made me realize that there are things that I can change about myself. The ways that I can change myself are endless, probably. I can become better. I can learn new things. And I know that you can do it too. And it's just three steps, not so easy ones, unfortunately. But the first step is just to get started. Try the new thing. Buy some Brussels sprouts. Try programming. Make your first tutorial video. Step two is admittedly the hardest one. Go into it without any expectations. This is your first time. You will probably be not very good at this. But would you expect a child that starts speaking to talk in full sentences on day one? Probably not. That would be very unrealistic. So have the same realistic expectations for yourself. And then Last step is the easy one, <laughs> just don't give up. Um, we discussed you're probably not very good on your first try, but this only means you have to try again. The only way to get better is to try and try and try. Don't give up too early and also don't expect too much in terms of your progress. Maybe it will take a while until you get there, but that's okay. The important thing is that you try to adopt this mindset, the growth mindset. And if you take anything away from this talk, I mean, some things are not so serious, but this thing, I'm dead serious. <laughs> um, look into the growth mindset. I recommend that you check out um, what Linda Rising um, is talking about in her uh, presentation about the agile mindset. Um, and she has great examples for how this helps children and adults to learn and become better, but also to be more satisfied and happy. So it's not only great for your career, but also for your mental health. And I hope uh, with all these things that I've 
uh, shown you, I was able to convince you at least a little bit that sometimes a role model doesn't have to be a top expert in something. Sometimes you can also learn from someone who knows less than you. And I hope I've also shown you that there are some things that we might learn from children and how they interact with the world. Um, yeah, I've shown you a few examples of these skills and I encourage you to look at these techniques as a set of tools, try them for yourself, see if they work for you and then maybe add them to your toolbox and take them out whenever it makes sense. And remember, if you do something for the first time, you're probably not very good. So if your first experience trying one of these techniques was only, eh, maybe give it another chance. Try again and see if you see any improvement. And over time, you might uh, become better at connecting with your inner child, maybe. And maybe you also yeah, watch your own children or other children. And maybe you get even more ideas what you can learn from them beyond the six that I've shown you. There are certainly more things. And I would be super happy if you tell me about your experience with that. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, for example, or using the um, death test email. And for now, back to learning from the experts. And uh, yeah, I wish you a lovely Sunday and enjoy the rest of the conference. Well, thank you, Sarah, for this wonderful presentation. I was particularly intrigued by by the be annoying part because <laughs> I, I just like tell so much of my history. I was a very annoying child and, <laughs> uh, and teenager. And so like I was always like pushed back to be less annoying, but um, it really, really helped me this, this noise, this perseverance and uh, this daring to approach people and to like get their attention. Um, really, really helped me to to like dive into into concepts to get excited uh, about about stuff and get a deeper understanding. And I think it's really, I mean, everybody uh, has been annoying as a as a child and being pushed back. And I think it's really about embracing that and and not to not to dare not to have this this apprehension of um, like being very distant distant from people. Yeah, yeah, always this fear of seeming maybe like you don't know something, so you don't want to ask too much, right? So if you're in this meeting and there are all these people and you want to seem smart and like you understood everything, so you don't ask. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, an even bigger problem. And also, I think it comes back to what you said about asking the the why and especially like in the, in the requirement engineering. Um, that is that is something which from for me what i wanted there is like there, there were a lot of new things in your presentation a lot of new new ways how to how to behave uh, and, and advice like parts of being a child how that helps you to grow as a developer as well but um the ask, ask why and then ask why like the question of the uh, the, the, the technique of the seven wives and so on that's, that's an old hat so that's something that we've heard so often but still there's a need to, to mention it right there's, there's still there's this apprehension to, to like really dig deep to, to keep on asking why to get people out of their comfort zone. So why, what do you think that, that still is such an issue? Can you repeat the last uh, sentence? I... Still, you, you still have to tell people to, to like ask the seven whys, even when there's uh, everybody heard it 17 times, then asking the deep questions is important. Yeah, certainly. Um, I totally agree because I I've experienced it so many times that you, you just stop asking and after a while it turns out that everyone understood totally different things because you never really dug deep enough and then everyone is like, okay, I understood it, I understood it. But the, the mental image that everyone had was totally disjunct. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think it's super important that everyone understands what we're building, why we're building it. Um, and yeah, really understanding it, I think helps just so much in finding the best way to approach something. Because sometimes, the, yeah, as I mentioned, the, the obvious solution is right there, but maybe it's not the best solution. Mm -hmm. Because if you just, yeah, accept what you're given, 
without questioning the whys, yeah, you, you just stay on the surface. And maybe you, you don't find something that's much better and much greater and will be beneficial in all kinds of ways, cheaper, easier to build, um, just a better solution for the customer overall. Mm -hmm. And we don't find the underlying problem uh, just like if you scratch the surface. Yeah. yeah. So we have a question in the chat from Patti. But he's asking what your biggest challenge was when you kicked off those new learning patterns. Could elaborate on that. Yeah, I think it's it's this this feeling that you don't want to seem like you don't know things, like that you are. <laughs> I mean, I think you always want to be professional, or you want to be perceived as someone who's super professional, who knows all those things, and uh, who's a great expert. But sometimes you have to go through this fear, and I've noticed that it's really cool when the more experienced people start doing that because someone who's a junior developer and is like in a big meeting might be really scared to ask a question and seem stupid but if you as someone who has a more senior role and is already accepted as some kind of expert you should always try to make the first step because it helps everyone around you because even if you might know the answer just asking the question um for all the other people is also um, a great way to approach this. And yeah, I've seen some of my colleagues do this and I'm always super, I was super grateful when I was in a position that I was the junior developer who didn't really understand what is going on. Um, and I try to do the same thing now. Um, but still it can happen that you're, yeah, that you're a bit shy asking these questions because you don't wanna seem, yeah, unprofessional or like you don't know your stuff. So I think this is certainly a big challenge. And then for the ones, the example that I mentioned, where, you, where I encourage you to think smaller, it's also difficult because it's always, I think it's often perceived as a good argument to say, oh, but Google does it this way. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, okay, but are we Google? Are we even close to Google in any sense? Um, we are just a way smaller team. So maybe this approach is great for them at their size and their situation. But we should really consider if it makes sense for us. Maybe we can learn something from them, but just taking an approach because it worked somewhere else and implementing it in your company that's maybe much smaller doesn't doesn't really make sense. But this is hard to challenge because it's often I feel a very accepted way to say, oh, but Amazon does it that way, and I don't know, SoundCloud does it that way, and the Spotify model works for Spotify, and yeah, I think this is definitely a challenge to to overcome. And I'm, I'm also happy to hear um, arguments that you've brought. I'm, <laughs> I'm also still learning <laughs> as all as everyone, I guess. Yeah, and I think you get credit when you when you dream big, people are like, Oh, yeah, great idea. But this is like, the, the, the small realistic things, they, they just don't seem so sexy. But I, I really like your point about the, the leading by example. And I see the, the responsibility for seniors to establish a culture where juniors have a, have a culture of learning. And it's, it's like I mean, back in university, it's just like the, in, the, in the lecture, like nobody understood anything. The professor asked uh, if anybody had a question, nobody asked the question. But maybe some, some person asked a question because um, they, they didn't understand something that was not clear to the others as well. And then they learn something from there as well. But if, if nobody understands, nobody dares to, to answer that yeah. question, then you don't learn. And the, the professor thinks everything is understood. And I mean, it's the same also in software development and maybe even more because there's, there's much more of this subjective um, understanding of a, of a problem and the, the discrepancies, what you have in mind, and then you don't get to a consistent product. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I hope everyone agrees that um, diverse teams are great to have. But I think in a very diverse team, this is even more important because you cannot always rely that everyone has the same background. If you are in a group of people where everyone studied computer science, maybe you can like rely that everyone has heard some concepts before. But if you have people that come from all kinds of backgrounds, maybe some have studied computer science, maybe some went through a boot camp, are self-taught, made a career change. And then you have to be way more aware that you cannot be sure that everyone has the same background and has the same basic understanding. So I think then it becomes even more important to be sure 
that everyone knows what everyone is talking about. And just ask one more time, just to be sure, <laughs> even if it might be annoying at this point. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, brought up diversity and starting small because that, that perfectly frames uh, our, our track as well for today for the conference day, because the starting small and like growing into the technology as a team that refers very well back to Carlos talk in the very beginning. And our last talk is about diversity. And, that, and so this is, a, this is a very good way to frame it. And I think that is a, a wonderful last word to, to send everybody uh, into the lunch break. So thank you so much for this talk. I, was, uh, I thank everyone for, for this wonderful morning as well. Really glad everything went so well. If you have any questions to any of the speakers, again, please feel free to, to send to, to this email address, not com, but online. I uh, made a mistake before. And um, yeah, have a, have a good lunch break. I will see you at 1.45 or maybe 1.43 so that we all make sure to be there at the, the right time. And uh, yeah, see you soon, everyone. And thank you so much. Bye. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>